The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Six table. Let your own taste and throat be the judge. For smoothness and mildness. There's never a rough puff in a Lucky Strike. For smoothness and mildness. There's never a rough puff in a Lucky Strike. Yes, let your own taste and throat be the judge. For smoothness and mildness. There's never a rough puff in a Lucky Strike. And that's because... L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco that gives you smoothness and mildness. And no wonder, for years, Lucky Strike has maintained America's largest and most complete cigarette research laboratory. Prior to the auctions, the buyers for Lucky Strike send sample tobacco leaves from all tobacco growing areas to this great laboratory for scientific analysis to help determine which tobaccos are really fine. And this is only one phase of the constant research that helps guarantee smoothness and mildness in every single Lucky Strike you smoke. So smoke a Lucky. Let your own taste and throat be the judge. For smoothness and mildness, there's never a rough puff in a Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, it is my pleasure to introduce the star of our show. And since today is March the 5th... How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Phil Harris, the one and only... Phil, Phil, that introduction was for me. Oh, I'm sorry, Dad, but when Donzie said fifth, I just naturally opened my mouth. (laughs) Well, cork it up again and sit down. (laughs) Continue, Don. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the month of March, and as you all know... March comes in like a lion and goes out like a ham. And here he is, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is Jack Benny talking, and Don, Donzy boy, for your information, the word is lamb, not ham. I know, Jack. I was only trying to be cute. Well, Don, when I want something your size to be cute, I'll get an elephant that toe dances. <laughs> so the next time... Oh, Jack, let's not start off the program with an argument. Mary, please, I'm admonishing Don for being overly facetious. Hmm, that new writer I've got is working out swell. <laughs> Anyway, Don, there are more interesting things to talk about in the month of March. Oh, you're right, Jack. I guess I could have talked about March 21st. Yes, that's the first day of spring. Or March 17th. That's St. Patrick's Day. Or March 15th. That's... Yike! (laughs) Mary, don't make me nervous. Hey, Jackson, what's so exciting about March the 15th? Well, since you don't seem to know, Phil, I'll tell you, March 15th is the day you pay your income tax. Income tax? What's that? Bill, income tax is a portion of a man's salary that is sent to the government to help the financial support of the country. Gee, this is interesting. (laughs) Certainly. As a matter of fact, when a man receives a salary check, it already has a basic deduction of 20%. 20%? That's one-fifth. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bill (laughs) Harris. Sorry, Dad, it slipped out subconscientiously. (laughs) Well, go sit down. Anyway, if I'm going to discuss income tax, I should talk to Alice, not to one of her dependents. (laughs) Jack, why do you keep insulting Phil like that? You treat him like he's a nobody, and he's got a lot of talent. Tell him, Livy, lay it on him. (laughs) He has a great personality and a lot of charm. Loaded with it. He even writes his own songs and leads a band Keep talking, Bonami, you ain't scratched the surface yet <laughs> He also sings and makes records Oh, well, won't you come with me to Alabama? Let's go see my dear old mammy And not only that, he, um, 
he, uh, he... What's the matter? Just talking about him made me sick. <laughs> I know what you mean, Mary. <laughs> now, look, kids. Look, kids. Uh, hey, you had a lot to do today, didn't you? <laughs> look, kids, let's not, uh... Let's not waste any more time. I want to see that everything is right before our guest star arrives. As you know, we're going to be honored today by the present of the presence of one of England's most famous daughters, Miss Sarah Churchill. Oh, she's the daughter of Winston Churchill, isn't she? Yes, Don. When she gets here, I want everybody on their good behavior. In fact, I made a few notes on that subject. Mary, did I give you the paper with the notes on it? Uh, yes, Jack. Here it is. Good. Read it, will you? Okay. To the boys in the orchestra. If the musical arrangement calls for the trombone section to be muted, please hold a derby in front of the horn instead of stuffing your socks into it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right, Barry. Very good, good. And to those who have tux no tuxedos, keep your coats buttoned so the bibs to your overalls don't show. <laughs> yes. And another thing, kids, when Miss Churchill arrives, I want everybody to stand up. Now, come on, let's rehearse it once. Everybody, including the orchestra. Stand up. Very good, very good. Now, sit down. Now, Mary, you're the only girl in the cast, so I think it's up to you. Oh, 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 that must be Miss Churchill now. Come on, everybody. Up, 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 up. That's it. Good, good. Coming. Coming. Hello, Mr. Benny. <laughs> hey, come on, kid. Why is everybody standing up? Well, that's to show respect. Well, it's about time. I've got two shows, you know. <laughs> Sit down, boys. Dennis, for your information, we were expecting Miss Sarah Churchill. Who's she? Who's she? Miss Churchill is not only a great actress, but she also happens to be the daughter of Winston Churchill. Who's he? <laughs> Dennis, Dennis, think back to the years of the war. Okay. Now, who was it who went from London to Casablanca... Then the next thing you heard, he was in Paris, Tehran, Yalta, and Potsdam. Now, who was it? Bob Hope. <laughs> yeah, and Jerry Colonna was in the House of Lords. <laughs> anyway, since Bob Hope's daughter, Sarah Churchill, hasn't arrived yet, let's have your song, okay. will you? Okay. Okay. spring under blossoming trees a song of romance seemed to dance on the breeze and who saw him kiss her and whisper of all the blossoms pretty blossoms on the bough he left her a dream and a tear a kiss on her lips to remember him by Who said forget him but didn't say how The blossoms, pretty blossoms on the bough Oh, sometimes words may be spoken That later prove untrue and sometimes a promise is broken As hearts are broken too A year has gone by It's springtime again She waits all alone And she sighs now and then Who knows her story Weeps with her now the blossoms, pretty blossoms on the bow. That was blossoms on the bow. 
sung by Dennis Day. And Dennis, that was wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And you want to know something, kid? What? I don't mind praising you and giving you compliments because you haven't got a head for it to go to. <laughs> Thank you. And now, oh, kids, I almost forgot. When Miss Churchill gets here, I'm going to invite her over to my house for dinner this evening. I want you all to come. Well, it's about time, Jackson. I haven't had dinner at your house since September the 10th. Now, wait a minute, Phil. It hasn't been that long since you've had dinner at my house. It was September the 10th, and I got the canceled check to prove it. <laughs> Gosh, how time flies. <laughs> anyway, kids, don't forget to be at my... Oh, oh, that must be Miss Churchill now. All right, everybody. Up, 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 up. Coming. Coming. Well, hello, Miss Churchill. Hello, Mr. Bennett. Uh, uh, come in, Miss Churchill. Come in. Mr. Benny, why is the orchestra standing up? Well, I thought it was a kind of a nice thing to do. You know? Oh, I see. Thank you. Uh, that chap in the Shakespearean costume is, is rather cute. <laughs> A Shakespearean costume? Yeah. That fellow at the drums. He's wearing tights. <laughs> tights? Oh, my goodness, Sammy forgot his pants. <laughs> Sit down, gentlemen, and pants. <laughs> well, Miss... <laughs> <laughs> Miss Churchill, it's really swell seeing you again. The last time I saw you was during my visit to London. That's right. You were appearing at the Palladium Theater. Yes, and you know, I never did get a chance to thank you. It was nice of you to come backstage to see me. It was nice of you to ask me. And it was nice of you to attend my opening. It was nice of you to sell me a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But, gee, I was thrilled in London. All those historical sites there, Buckingham Palace, Westminster Abbey, Piccadilly Circus, the Leaning Tower of Pisa, the changing of the... Mr. Bannon. Uh-huh. Uh, the Leaning Tower of Pisa is in Italy. Oh. Well, doesn't it lean over into London just a little? <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe a teensy-weensy thing? I'm afraid not. Well, <laughs> live and learn, I always say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Miss Churchill, I'd like you to meet the members of my cast. You remember Mary. You met her in London. Hello, Miss Churchill. Hello, Mary. Oh, please, everybody call me Sarah. Well, thank you. And Sarah, this is my orchestra leader, Phil Harris. I'm sure you remember him. He also appeared with us at the Palladium. Oh, yes. Old ham hocks and turnip green. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> He's proud of it yet. Now, Sarah, this is my announcer, Don Wilson. Nice meeting you, Mr. Wilson. Oh, I'm thrilled, Miss Churchill, and I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you that I've always been a great admirer of your father. Well, thank you. In fact, we all admire your father. That's right, Mary. What does he do? <laughs> Phil. I didn't say nothing wrong. What does he do? <laughs> He's a painter. <laughs> Uh, very good, Sarah, but on him it was lost <laughs> Now, let's see Oh, yes, there's just one more member of the cast I'd like you to meet uh, This is our singing star, Dennis Day Oh, hello, Dennis How do you do, Miss Churchill? Deucedly jolly of you to guest on our little wireless jamboree today Yorks, bubble and squeak and a penny of pitch <laughs> Now, Dennis Dennis, be sensible or I'll have to admonish you for being facetious What does that mean? I'm gonna crush your head like an egg <laughs> So watch it, kid. Uh, by the way, Sarah, are you enjoying your stay in America? Oh, very much. There are certain things that still puzzle me. Puzzle you? What are they? Well, your movies, for instance. Uh, last night I went to see a very funny picture called Francis. It's an amazing story about a talking mule. A talking mule? Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah. Such grammar. <laughs> grammar? I know exactly what you mean, sir. <laughs> I seen Francis, and once when that mule was talking, instead of the past perfect tense, he used the past indicative and wound up with a dangling participle. (laughs) 
Well, now, that's very interesting, Mr. Harris. Are you a student of grammar? Yes, ma'am. There ain't nothing I don't know about English. <laughs> well, Sarah, now that you've paid us the compliment of being with us today, is there anything we can do to entertain you? Is there anything you'd like to see, one of our sketches or, well, anything? Well, Jack, I've always listened to your program, and, and years ago you used to do Western sketches in which you played the part of Buck Benny. Uh-huh. Well, I always enjoy those so much. Would it be possible for you to do one today? You mean Buck Benny rides again? Why, certainly. Gosh, we haven't done that for so long. It'll be fun for us, too. Uh, do, you, do you think you could find a part in it for me? You? In a Western? I mean, playing the part of a cowgirl? Well, Jack, I, I think I could do it so well you wouldn't even have to admonish me. <laughs> admonish you? Yes. You've been using that word as though it was something new. <laughs> Well, it is to me. You see, I have a new writer now. <laughs> but uh, there is a part in the sketch of a school marm that I think you would enjoy doing. Oh, I'm sure I will. Uh, Sarah, I've been meaning to ask you, for being a guest on Jack's program, is he paying you in dollars or pounds? Well, to be frank, Mary, when I brought up the subject of money, Jack said we could settle that after the show. Oh, brother. <laughs> Why, what's wrong? Now you're going to find out what your father meant by blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> Mary, stop that. Now, if we're going to do our sketch, let's get started. Now, come on, Don, you set the scene, and then well, we'll... Mr. Benny, have uh, you got a part for me in it? Huh? Oh, Mel Blank. Now, let's see. Yes, Mel, I may have a part for you, but it won't be very important. You know? Oh, I don't care. I'll do anything. Really, Mr. Benny, I don't care. Well, fine, Mel, fine. Now, Don, set the scene. So, oh, excuse me. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. <laughs> well, what is it, Rochester? Just thought I'd tell you I'm preparing the dinner you're giving for Miss Churchill. Good, good. How's the roast beef coming along? Pretty good, boss, but I've never seen a piece of meat with so much fat on it. What are you talking about? That roast wasn't so fat. It wasn't. When it melted down, I oiled everything in the house, filled the car, and sold the rest to Glenn McCarthy. <laughs> Glenn McCarthy? He's laying a pipeline tomorrow. Rochester, stop being so silly. And don't forget, when you're making out the place cards, I want Miss Churchill to sit at my right. Yes, sir. And by the way, Rochester, did you make that phone call? Yes, sir. I called Washington like you told me to. Uh-huh. But they said that even though you're giving a dinner for someone from Europe, you'll have to pay for it yourself. It has nothing to do with the Marshall Plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, forget it. It was just a thought. See you later, Rochester. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Yes? Uh, what time are you going to bring your guest for dinner? Right after the program. Oh, then I better go lock the door to the back porch. Why? You don't want people coming in to use the Bendix while you've got company. <laughs> well, I don't mind them using the machine, but hanging the clothes in the living room is murder. <laughs> Last night I had some friends in, and we had to watch television through Ronald Coleman's underwear. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad you thought of that, Rochester. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now, let's see, where, uh... uh where were we? Uh, you were getting ready to start the sketch, Buck Benny Rides Again. Oh, yes. Now, Sarah, the action of our play takes place way out west, where men are men and women are women. Well, you can't ask for a better arrangement than that. <laughs> no, ma'am. <laughs> All right, Don, set the scene. Buck Benny rides again. Ladies and gentlemen, our play tonight opens at the ranch of that fearless, hard-riding cowboy, Buck Benny. <laughs> Curtain music. <laughs> I'm an old cow hand from the Rio Grande. I learned to ride for I learned to stand, but I can't sing with this lousy band. <laughs> Yippee, I o ki yay. Well, I better mosey down to the corral and see how my foreman, Cassidy, is doing. Oh, here he comes now. Morning, Buck. Morning, drag along. <laughs> Say, drag, what you blushing about? Well, just a few minutes ago, I did something silly. What was that? I was sitting on my horse singing empty saddles. I see what you mean. <laughs> You're the only man I know who rides side saddle on both sides. <laughs> Well, 
Well, I'm going into town. I want to see what's going on at the Golden Nugget. So long, drag along. So long, Buck. Easy getting up on that horse. Don't worry about me. <laughs> steady, boy, steady. <laughs> steady there. Buck, you're supposed to get up on the other side. Oh, Mel don't care. <laughs> Steady, boy, steady. <laughs> there we are. Giddy up, citation. Giddy up. Ah, <laughs> uh, here's the golden nugget. Whoa, boy. <laughs> Doggone just once, I'd like to come in through the door. <laughs> There's my girlfriend, Calamity Livingston Hiya, Calamity Hi, Buick Buick? That's Buck I'm sorry, those holes in your head fooled me <laughs> Fools everybody Well, Calamity, how about having a drink with me? Don't mind if I do Good Bartender, bourbon and water What's for the lady? The water Stand aside, Calamity. I want to hear some music. I'm going to play that jukebox at the other end of the room. Have you got a nickel? Who needs a nickel? See that coin slot? Yep. From this valley, they say you're a queen. We shall miss your sweet face and your smile. Just because you are weary and tired, you are changing your range for a while. You're crying Them ballads always get me <laughs> I guess because I'm the sentimental type. Hey, Buck, Buck, I've been looking for you What's wrong, Dragalong? Cattle rustlers just raided the new school barms place Cattle rustlers, doggone, they've been terrorizing this area for nigh on to 20 years Come on, let's rush over there See you later, Calamity <laughs> There's the school mom's house over yonder here we are. Whoa! Well, I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm how am I ever going to get out of China? You're not in China. Those are my house boys. Oh, who are you, ma'am? I'm the new school mom, Sarah Jones, whose father has just bought the old Z-Bar Ranch. But the rustlers are trying to steal our cattle to force us to sell the land cheap because they know that the old abandoned mine under it really has a rich vein of gold which we do not know about at all, I reckon. <laughs> Well, that takes care of the plot. 
<laughs> can you talk a little more Western? I sure can, partner. Huh? <laughs> I reckon. Good, good. Now, what's this I hear about cattle rustlers? They've been a bothering you? Yep. They took all my cows except that. Oh, look, look. What's wrong? There's an Indian coming towards us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but he don't look dangerous. I'll talk to him. How? How? Me friend. Me tired. <laughs> Make long journey. Come all way from Hudson River. Hudson River? Why they call River Hudson? You have to step down to get into it. <laughs> Oh, well, what do you want? Nothing. Me just come to do joke. Goodbye. <laughs> just came to do the joke, eh? Watch this, Sarah. Buck! Buck, you shot that poor Indian right through the head. Oh, Mel, don't care. <laughs> now tell me, Missy Ma'am, about those rustlers. You see any of them? Yep, I saw the leader. He's a medium-built fella, kind of cute-looking. He's a Mexican. A Mexican? Yep. Here he comes now. Whoa, tamale. Whoa, whoa. Hello, senorita. You too, gringo. Stick up your hands, for I am the Mexican bandit, Senor Deniso McNulty. <laughs> so you're the bandit, eh? Si, senor. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, hombre, robbing poor women. Oh, I cannot help being a bandit, senor. What do you mean you can't help it? I won the giant jackpot on the radio quiz program, and I'm doing this to pay the taxes. <laughs> oh. What you do before you became a bandit? Oh, senorita, I was a bullfighter. I was the most dashing, the boldest, the fighting, the most reckless, the bravest, the most fearless bullfighter in all Mexico. Well, why did you quit? I'm a little yellow. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Senior McNulty, why don't you reform and get to be an honest citizen like Buck Benny? Like him? Ho, ho, ho. I am laughing. Why? What's wrong with me? You are supposed to be the great cowboy. Can you roll a cigarette with one hand? Not on this program. <laughs> <laughs> now, Deniso, because we're a little late, I'll arrest you in the name of the law. Ha, ha. To arrest me, you must catch me first. Giddy up, Tamale. Giddy up. Quick, you went that away. Let's grab our pintos and we can head that hombre off at the pass, partner. That was my line, Sarah, but you read it swell. Come on. <laughs> Let's get on our horses and chase him. <laughs> We're again in on him. Yep. Why do we keep passing the same scenery? They expect it in westerns. Now, where's my gun? We're close enough for me to take a shot at him. I gotta take careful aim now. I gotta beat on him. There. <laughs> oh. Buck! Buck, what happened? I shot my own horse. <laughs> Look, my poor horse is dead. Well, that's all right. Mel don't care. Ah, <laughs> guess not. Come on, Sarah, let's go to the Golden Nugget and play the jukebox. <laughs> Jack will be back in just a moment, but first... Let your own taste and throat be the judge. For smoothness and mildness, there's never a rough puff in a lucky strike. Let your own taste and throat be the judge. For smoothness and mildness, there's never a rough puff in a lucky strike. And that's because LSMFT, LSMFT, lucky strike means fine tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco that gives you smoothness and mildness with never a rough puff. Listen to what Mr. Linwood L. Sturdivant, an independent tobacco warehouseman from Lewisburg, North Carolina, recently said. I've seen plenty of tobacco bought and sold, about 150 million pounds. And year after year, I've seen Lucky Strike by fine light leaf that makes extra enjoyable smoking. I've smoked Luckies for 11 years. Millions of smokers, including the famous movie and television star Robert Montgomery, take a tip from the experts and smoke Lucky Strike. Just recently, Mr. Montgomery said, Luckies are really smooth. That's why I smoke them regularly. And for your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, light up a Lucky. Let your own taste and throat be the judge. For smoothness and mildness, there's never a rough puff in a Lucky Strike. Get a carton today. Thank you very much, Miss Churchill. Good night, everybody. Be sure to hear Dennis Day and a day in the life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned for the Amos and Andy show, which follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>